What's up, hockey fans and hockey fanatics out there? Welcome to episode three of the Hockey Lounge. I am your host, Nick. If you want to become a lounge member, hit that subscribe button below or follow us on Instagram, the Hockey Lounge. Spicy, spicy, and more spicy tonight is in the lounge. We got a couple Leaf fanatics in the house tonight, as well as Vic. The Philly Fanatic is here to duel with a good friend of mine and two previous bosses of mine a long time ago when I first got my part-time job as a dishwasher. <laughs> and chicken bones as well. Um, <laughs> that I've looked up to for so many years. They're like big brothers. It's an honor to have them on the show. Uh, we have Piero up top there. It's like the Brady Bunch. Piero... <laughs> We got uh, Lenny, and there we go. We got Vic Bonds back in the house tonight. So, gents, welcome to the lounge. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Good, Good to be to back, buddy. You. Awesome, awesome. The lounge. So, 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 there's a couple. Again, a couple of things we've um, we've done Hold this on. lounge before you start, Nick. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> I want to put on the black armband for you tonight. Okay. <laughs> Rest in I peace. love you. <laughs> But you know, Pittsburgh had enough cups in your generation. Yeah. So leave some for the Leafs. We got to start now, okay? Thank you, Piero. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, so again, we have uh, we have a couple of guys that are big time Leaf fans. Um, you know, Lenny and Piero, they're brothers. Uh, they've cheered for the Leafs for so many years. Um, ups and downs, yeah. highs and lows. More downs, more downs than ups. But. More downs than yeah, more down than than ups. But uh, def me. definitely, um, you know, we we've uh, we've seen some highs back in '93. Uh, that playoff run, I think that was a great run for for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They haven't won a, a series since 2004, since Ottawa. Um, I believe that's correct, guys. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, right. they beat Ottawa, and then Vic's uh, team took out the Leafs in the second round. Oh, oh there you go. Freaking and Lenny and I were at that game where Ronick roofed it over. They are. Yeah. Game yeah. six. Yeah, so. And you remember that Philly fan were walking through the corridor, and he kept shooting his mouth off and almost ripped his head off? <laughs> Who? Some Flyer fan. Some, Some Flyer fan. fan. Shooting off and his you know, mouth. Lenny, he's, he, if that would have happened, that would have happened in Philadelphia. Some Leaf fan, that guy would have been destroyed. Okay. <laughs> well, Lenny destroyed him. He got right up to his nose, and you know the f bomb started coming out. <laughs> for sure. He didn't know yeah, you're right. Was. It's it's a different atmosphere in Philly when you're wearing the opposing team jersey. That's for sure. <laughs> yep. Hey, yep. I, I was in Chicago for a, a Leaf uh, blackout game in '93. No, it was '94. Sorry, the second go around, and uh, it was game game three and four. I went to see. Whenever we had about 10 guys with Leaf jerseys on, whenever Chicago scored, they threw their beer on us. Well, what are we going to do? Nothing. Nothing. You, you can't do there. anything. You can't Nothing. do anything. Well, what Vic would do, he would have his mouth open, catching that beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. Yes, yes. Keep sending them. <laughs> <laughs> so so a few topics we're going to go around the horn tonight in the lounge. We're going we're gonna to talk about the Leafs Canadians. We're going to talk about Connor McDavid. Nathan McKinnon, if you were a GM today in the NHL, who would you build your franchise with? <clears throat> and we're going to look around the NHL playoffs. Disappointments, of course, the jersey behind me. Surprises, uh, series that we're enjoying to watch. So first off, Leafs-Canadians. Leafs are up three games to one. They shellacked the Canadians last night. Um, Leaf Nation, all the Leaf fans out there are really excited that this is going to be the year that 2004 will be a distance memory. And they'll move on to the second round, and the Winnipeg Jets are waiting in the wings. Now, a couple of questions I have for, and we'll start from Piero up, and then we'll move our way down to Vic here. So first one would be is, in terms of the Leafs, the expectations for this playoffs for 2021, what would be an A plus would be a Stanley Cup? But as a Leaf fan, your expectations – what would make you happy at the end of the 2020, 2021 playoffs? Regardless, let's say they don't win the Stanley Cup. What is what is your expectation, Piero? Well, expectation was from game one of the regular season till now hasn't changed for me. There's no doubt 
that they have to get to the final four or it's failure. Failure, failure. Game seven, second round doesn't mean anything. They have to go to the final four and compete. Now, if they lose in seven to whoever may be, Tampa, uh, you no, know. They play, they play Vegas, Colorado, Colorado next year, maybe, But they have to compete. The final four, nothing else, man. Nothing else. Okay, so final four. Lenny, your thoughts on uh, well, expectations? I, well, I have mixed expectation because of the team that they have. And this is the best team by far. All the years I've been following this team. Uh, and my expectation for them to, is to get to the, the final, to the finals. That's what I think they should. That would be. That's, if that's they what get I'm healthy. If Pardon? they get healthy. Pardon? If they get healthy. That's a big gift. Oh, they'll get healthy. I mean, uh, yeah. I think Tavares will get back and in, into play, uh, probably in the middle of the third round. Um, yeah, if the, I mean, I'm, I know I'm jumping ahead, but I really think that they can get to the third round. Um, they have, the, they have the talent. They have the talent to, to do it, and you know, all these naysayers and everybody I listened to and prior to the Habs and Leaf uh, uh, series. And they're saying, "Oh, the Habs are going to win in six, or the Habs this." The Habs have nothing. What, what what are they watching? I know there's a lot of Leaf haters out there, and they want to see the Leafs go down. But realistically, how can you say that <laughs> that Montreal is going to beat Toronto? Just talent alone, Christ! Mm. If the yeah. Toronto Maple Leafs were had another jersey on without the logo, everybody said this team is awesome. This team's going to win the Stanley Cup. Because it's the Toronto Maple Leafs, everybody shits on them. And well, I, that's that's because of past history too, Lenny, right? That's past. the past. Yeah, no, I understand, we're but that's that's talking. what people are going on, right? Well, Lenny, Lenny, we, that's what they're basing on history. We're going to go back yeah. to uh, Harold Ballard days. I mean, no, no but Lenny, but Lenny, seen, but Lenny for example, years. for example, can like Boston the couple years against Boston, you blew. Okay, first of blew, all, okay, listen, blew that last game seven okay. lead. So let, let me let, 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 let you're talking about. Okay, that? let's 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 go back to that series in one second. So hold on, guys, yeah. one second here. Okay, so let, let we'll get back to the Boston series when they blew the lead. So a question I want to ask you guys here. Okay. Right. Is, off topic. I just, I just. Yeah. No. No problem. No problem. We and we want to get off topic a little bit because sometimes we're a little bit off here in the lounge. So. And, so 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 that being said. Let me present this question to you. So, Vic, you're, you're, first off, what do you think is the high expectation here for a for a Leaf fan? What would be a, a let's say um, a, a win season for these Leafs besides the Stanley Cup? Well, I think their first win, obviously, is getting out of the first round. Finally, right? Um, I, listen, they they have the team. They should they should get into the out of the North, uh, but. As you know, my sleeper pick was the Jets, and I'm still sticking by the Jets. Um, I said, I said, if you know the Jets would. Start, start playing a big game, a uh, tough game, and Hellebuck start playing like a uh, Vesna Trophy winner again, um, are we just beating a Vesna Trophy not winner now? What's that? Isn't Toronto beating a Vesna Trophy winner now? <laughs> Yeah, but what else do they have beside that? Besides okay. that, what do they have? I interrupted your ear. No, no, yeah. it's okay. But Go hey, ahead. listen, but like I said, the Leafs with the team with the team the Leafs have, they should win the North. Okay? Yeah. But oh, so I, I picked the Jets and I think, I think the Jets will give them a run. Oh, What's Jets that? are gonna be harder than Montreal. And I'm oh, not sure. sure. The Absolutely. series is not over yet for Montreal and Toronto, but no, they're the, done. Jets, the Jets D to me is weak. I, okay, I, so I, I've always said I agree it. with you, Piero. So uh, we're going to get to the Jets-Leafs matchup because I do think they're going to beat the Montreal Canadiens. This question I have for you fellas tonight, though, when you look at the Toronto Maple Leafs organization, many people across the hockey world think the Leafs are a brand, not an organization. So they put the brand in as the logo, like a Nike logo, Adidas, Puma. It's a brand. It's not really a culture that has a winning uh, culture right now. And if you notice, you're saying, uh, yeah, right. So there, 
they like to sell their jerseys, they sell their paraphernalia, yeah. their memorabilia, but the end result and the pain that you guys have felt for so many years, and I do give you guys credit for sticking with your team, but if you notice when you're walking outside and you see the kids in the schoolyards, you see the kids, you know, at the hockey arenas, and I see them in the hockey arenas six or seven days a week be before COVID, the Leaf paraphernalia is not there anymore. You Ooh. have the kids jumping on other teams. So for the Leafs to get back at it, and now with Austin Matthews, Mitchell Marner, Nylander, Tavares, can this brand start winning? They brought in Babcock. They brought in Shannon. They brought in Dubas. When do you guys as Leaf fans think enough's enough to cheer for a team that just doesn't give you the results you guys need every year? If they lose three in a row. They lose in a three row. Uh, yeah, if they lose, the, if they lose three, three in a row three now, three. all this. But down. you know, no, you're saying, what if they don't get past Winnipeg? You think? Yeah, that, that, that's my question. What? You wouldn't be a disappointment. It wouldn't be a disappointment. They didn't lost it would, Winnipeg. It would be a great disappointment if they don't. I, I, don't I, disagree, I disagree with you. What you're saying about the Leaf paraphernalia not being around because I see a lot more today than I've ever seen in in my in uh, my lifetime with the younger generation wearing the Matthews and Marner jerseys and, and hats and all that. So because the kids, they like to, they like to cheer for winners and you, the, the, the Leafs are becoming winners. You have to realize these guys that are playing now, Matthews and Marner, they're still 23 years old. Right. Right. They're, they're still young. They still, they're, they still got a couple of years to get really into their prime. So you imagine what they're going to do when they're 25 and 26? A hundred percent. But if you go back to, if you go back to uh, Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane, Sidney Crosby, uh, Jenny Malkin. Okay. They well, brought, that's, they, that's they, where they, it starts, right, Nick? They, no, that's Sydney where it starts. A, never had a legitimate superstar. That, that's where it starts, but it only oh, took them two to three years to okay, so get now, to a cup final. So we're talking now, we're talking four or five years. We're yeah. also talking about Mitchell Marner that hasn't scored a goal in 16 playoff games. Okay, yeah, but that's you think that's going to continue. It'll change. For my brother, it'll, you cannot say anything wrong about <laughs> Mitch Marner, McDonald, the Rocky Saganak. Rocky please. Okay, okay. listen. Listen, he's right. Marner has to score. Yes, yes, sir. He is. He is. He's just not a felicit. He just doesn't just pass the puck. He's got to put the puck in the net. You and know that power play is stagnant because of him. Okay. I'm telling you. First of all, the, the the first the first power play that they have now, Jumbo Joe got to get off. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. He's too slow. Yeah. Mix it up. Throw somebody. Out. Young Nylander, Matthews. Marner and whether it be Sandine and uh or O'Reilly and then Listen, Hyman with that, are not with the, on that for two minutes. With two the minutes. forwards they have, I put a fourth forward on the power play. No, but I'm just saying those guys should be there a minute 45 on the power play. The guys I just mentioned. There's yeah. no reason why not. Lee. I think I think the, the issue with Marner is as we know is uh, he wants once the the going gets tough in the playoffs, so then me he, he kind of disappears. Yeah, and it's not a, it's not a knock against his play. It's just I don't think he's like he doesn't have the size for it. Obviously, um, you know. Yeah, and Kane has the size of it. What's that? Kane has the size. Patrick Kane has size. Patrick Kane and Mar uh, Martin. Okay, but size. but but Kane has proved that he can do it. Marner hasn't. Well, no, you're right. So, 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 right. Right. so we we have a comment. We we have a comment from a viewer. From a viewer, D. E. Santiago, uh, Willie needs more time, more uh, number one power play time. That's yes, a comment sir. from uh, yeah. Santiago. Yeah. I, I, I would. Uh, Santiago's right. They should put him on the power play. But what's but wrong with having four forwards still, out there? Yeah, then why not? Why not put four forwards on? Then so one Jen, four forwards so, on. They have four so, forwards in the D. No. So Jen, I'm saying add a oh, fourth no. forward on the on the oh. on the point. All, all, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's been a ding in my ear, and uh, there is a guest that's wait, waiting to come on. The Okane oh, is making an appearance on the lounge hey, tonight. Hey, he is on, in the boy. house. He has hey, decided boy, to come boy. in. Hey, now guys, can you hear me? Franco, Frank, 
Now we, hey, uh, we are men and three to two. Hey, we're out of the basement making sausages. You're done yeah. making sausages? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was Sheldon Keith when he came on with the hot coming from practice and the and the, the golf shirt. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, go very ahead. Good, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, no, guys, you know what? I thought I'd pipe in over here. Yeah. So continue yeah. that conversation with Marner. Absolutely, Nick. I agree with you 100%. Um, I feel you got to get him off that power play and give Willie Nealander a chance. Right, put a message across to him saying, "Let's let's get serious." Right. No, I would I, listen. I would take off Joe Thornton and put in Willie Nylander, because at least Mar Marner can make the plays. Thornton looks a step behind with those guys. He even putting, even putting Spetsa instead of Thornton would be better. Yeah, Spetsa would even be, be better. At least you have another guy on, on the ice that can win faceoffs. If you got thrown out, and that's the other thing too. What's with these linesmen? Always throwing out players out of the dot. I mean, yeah, they want to be showcasing themselves or something. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll it's never ridiculous. fix it. You never fix the refereeing. The ref, the, right? the refereeing yeah. in the NHL is the most. <laughs> Frankie Piero's got, got, got the band on for the Penguins tonight, uh, uh, Mister uh, Mister uh, uh, Nick here. Yeah, thank you. Um, the the refereeing in in the in the playoffs is just. Uh, uh, it's been uh, up and down, inconsistent. But it's every year, though. Yeah, it's every it, year. Uh, to me, to me, it's worse and worse. Yeah, hundred percent, Lenny. Like you, you look at you look at the regular season play, and then you go into playoffs, and now things are being let let go. It's just to me, if I was a player, I'd be really pissed off because the inconsistency. You don't know what it is a penalty, what's not a penalty. So let's talk about Soupy Campbell, and and we we. We think tomorrow night should be the uh, the nail in the coffin for the Montreal Canadiens. And like Vic had said, um, and we'll start off with Vic here. Vic's going to be, uh, you know, we're talking about Hellebuck and then we're talking about Campbell, right? Yeah. Um, I think Campbell's played steady throughout the first four games. Um, and the Leafs have done a good job with, you know, clearing the crease and, you know, not a lot of rebounds. He's been, you know, catching everything in the crest. Not that Montreal has a lot of goal scores, but it does give a goalie confidence when you know you're stopping the puck, and Lenny knows that being a former goalie, uh, right? Target. <laughs> um, so, Vic, your thoughts, your thoughts, Vic, on, um, and we'll go, we'll go from uh, Vic to Frank to Piero to Lenny here on the matchup of if the Leafs do get by the Canadians tomorrow night, you have Hellebuck and you have Campbell. Uh, your thoughts. Well, again, Hellebuck is where I see the difference there. Uh, Campbell, Campbell's look good, but at the same time, uh, the Jets are going to pose a different, uh, a different dynamic. And uh, like Montreal has not shown that they can they can keep up offensively. They well, they can't they can't score. They can score more than two goals. So yeah, Campbell's look good, but has he really been tested? I just I want know. to say Winnipeg will be different in one area big time is the power play. If yeah, the Leafs yeah. take the penalties that they've been taking, I know a lot of them, maybe some aren't, some are, but whatever. They had five penalties the other night. They take five penalties against Winnipeg, they're in big, big trouble. Why? Well, that's, that's where the Leafs power play has to smarten up. Exactly. Right? You got to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, you know what? I guess I think I, st I think Hellebuck uh, is going to, you know, po pose a problem for the Leafs. Um, their their banging and crashing will pose a problem for them. Their speed uh, and just you, Campbell Campbell being tested. How is he going to handle it? Yeah. So so Lenny, you being a former goalie yeah. and looking at the two styles of play right now with Kerry Price yeah. and Campbell, um, how would how would you uh, describe Campbell's type of style, his goalie style, compared to Carey Price's right now? Well, I think Carey Price is a very uh, he's more ac acrobatic than than Campbell is. Campbell is more of a, you stay in your crease, a position, position up and down, side to side. If you if you watch Campbell, he doesn't he doesn't look nervous when the no, he's pretty he, sound, right? He's sound. He's he's, he's steady. 
is that the, that's also because of his defense uh, in front of him, making him see the shots clearer, what have you. So he's not really moving side to side like Carey Price has been doing. I mean, Carey Price, and uh, you know, listen, Carey Price is one of the best goaltenders of all time. I mean, but he can only do so much. Uh, but do you feel that Campbell's been tested enough? In this series, yeah. Right. Look at the other night. Look at the night when they they got shot out, out shot fifteen to two, whatever it was in the in the third period. Okay, he, I'm he, saying he, in a in a complete series, do you, do you think he'll be able to handle a full series? Why not? He's been doing it all season. He's been absolutely. Playing, he's been doing all. Listen, I just want to say, okay. come on. I, I just want to say, when you're hot, well, you guys, okay. Let me finish. Hold on. First of all, he was picked for, in the first round, eleventh overall. There's a reason why you got picked for the first 11th in the first round. So he's showing it. Yeah, it took a little longer to get there, but he's showing it. He can he can handle it. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm it's, not saying he's not. I'm not saying that he's not. His position to lose. Now, if he starts losing uh, two or three games and not playing the way he's playing, then you bring in Anderson. For me, Anderson can stay on the bench until he's needed. Even for tomorrow night's game, you play so, Campbell. Keep him going. Keep going. So I mean, the playoffs is a different story. You can't start swapping goalies left, right, and center no. unless he's injured. If he's I injured, I'm not going to there. Yeah, go ahead, Piero. Go. Ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say. I that. just want to yeah. say when a goalie yeah. gets hot in the playoffs, it yeah. doesn't matter if he's been in the NHL ten years, no, one no, year, four years. Look at Billington. When they get hot. Hold on. When they get hot, mm. you ride them. And I just want to Cam Talbot. Was out of the hockey two years ago. <laughs> Look what he's doing in Minnesota. Right, he's standing on his head. That series should be over. You you also have to go back to um, when you're looking at rookie right. goalies. You go back to 2016, 2017 with Matt Murray. He drove Mark Andre Fleury yeah. out of Pittsburgh. <laughs> you, you also brought up a good point with Jordan Bingington. He got brought up in January, the year the St. Louis Blues won the cup. Um, so Allen. yes, you, sorry, go ahead. Jake <laughs> Allen knocked out of there, right? Yeah, Jake Allen, he knocked out of the net. He took yeah. over, they won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> so you do have those runs where, like you said, Piero, when a goalie gets hot, he gets hot, he goes on a good run. Now, my question here is we'll start from Frankie up. Do you think Kyle Dubas has set up this team for success by sort of giving the pipes to? Campbell with Anderson do they have the goaltending though if Campbell starts you know if he stays hot fine if he doesn't we don't we all know Anderson has not won uh, a cup or sorry has not won a series ever also I do have a, a relative of mine that pr played with him in Anaheim practiced with him every day and said this guy is at best a number two goalie at best a number two goalie. So that being said, are they set up? Because they, because what I believe with the Toronto Maple Leafs guys right now is I like the moves of bringing in the veterans, even though there's not a lot of cups with the veterans. I like the moves. They're more gritty. They're more deep. But do they have the goaltending to take them to the Stanley Cup finals or win the Stanley Cup? That is my question because you have to get by Halibach. Now, if they play Colorado – Grubauer, I don't believe, can win Colorado a cup. Do they have the goaltending to get them to the promised land with both goalies? Frank? Yep, I, uh, I think so. Um, reason B is that you nailed it with the experience they have now, right? Um, but the experience can't stop the puck, Frank. Yeah. Understood, right? Our goalies, they're in their zone right now, okay? You can depend on them. They got confidence, right? Um, I believe that Campbell can do it for the Leafs, 100%. Okay, can I pipe in for a minute? Go ahead. Sure. Yep. Okay, so I, I've been, I watch a lot uh, the, the hockey, obviously, and you see the team play differently in front of Campbell and when they play in front of Anderson this year. You watch them play again, play when Anderson and that, it seems like they're on a bit of an on edge. But when Campbell's in that, it's different. You see, I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but you, you see that the team plays differently in front of, front of Campbell than when they do with Anderson. Maybe because they knew that Anderson wasn't 
you know, he was he was he was hurt, and they weren't weren't saying anything. So, well, well yeah, you know, when, like Frank said, I mean, I believe that they can get to the to the finals. They can't because who picked Dallas Stars to go to the finals last year with uh, what's his name? What's what's the goalie's name? Habib Bull. What was I forget his name? Kadobin. Yeah. Kadobin. Kadobin. I mean, yeah. nobody nobody picked Dallas, <clears throat> and like my brother said, he they got hot. And it took them to the Stanley Cup Finals. Doesn't matter what your name is on the back. <laughs> Not all the time. But if you get hot in the playoffs, a goalie rides you. And I go back to the Leafs on their D unit. I, I know they're playing an inferior opponent. Montreal is not probably the worst team in the playoffs out of the six. Well, well, Piero, Piero, just, Piero, just to tell you, just to tell you that is that they would not make the playoffs in any right. other division except exactly. for the North Division. No, but I'm just saying, look at the way the Leafs exert their zone compared to other years. Their defense is different. Their coaching is different. It had it, meant the puck. It comes out of the zone a lot better, a lot quicker. They're not running around for 40-second shifts like they did in the Boston series. They still might if they face Boston. I don't know. Time will tell. But I don't think I think they're a hell of a lot better in their own end. We don't have Jake Gardner in ever, so it's okay. Yeah. And everybody says the North Division is horrible defensively, a yeah. lot of goals. Man, look at the other divisions, guys. They had Buffalo and Jersey in one division. Another division had uh, Anaheim and uh, San Jose. Come on, For sure. Every, we're all every division every, had every, every division had, had a couple, two, yeah, two or three, two or three stinkers. Okay. You're right. You're absolutely right there, Piero. The the question that, though that I have is Vic. In terms of, again, let's talk about the defensive core of the Leafs, right? Um, are they strong enough uh, to uh, – and you, like Piero mentioned, the Winnipeg core, right? So to me, if they do face Winnipeg, from the goalie out, especially the defense, will the Leafs be better than Winnipeg in terms of D? Because that's going to be a big question. I, I think their D is their D is pretty even. Uh, the Leafs don't have a, uh, a your legitimate number one stud defenseman. The Jets don't either. Um, Campbell, uh, Cam, like you said, P Piero, he, they may look the, the Leafs may play better in front of Campbell, and that's probably because they're more confident. When, no, when Lenny they, said it, not the yeah. sorry, Lenny. <laughs> when 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 a team when a team. Uh, <laughs> When a team has confidence in their goalie, they're gonna they're gonna play with more confidence. Obviously, we okay, all know that. One hundred percent, Vic. And that, that's through. what I wanted to say before was the fact that after every game, Campbell wins. There's that relationship he has with the players. But okay, right? with, that, with that said, I, in my opinion, Campbell that's has key. not. Campbell has not been tested yet. You can't say that he has right. been tested. Vic. Okay, hold against on. Montreal, you he's made. Big saves. Yeah, so maybe, you're yeah. Yeah. okay. That's the best in the regular season as well, right? So those yeah, 100%. Games, won, those Vic, how can you say one in a row? He's not being tested. Come on, Vic. Yeah, hey, I know. Hey, Come on, Vic. Never mind the regular yeah, season. Vic, We're not Vic, talking Vic, about Vic. We're talking Vic. regular season. Okay, you, I, well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. We got we got somebody. Uh, my cousin Paul has been texting me. Uncle Paul, remember we went to. Uh, that's a big, big, big shout out to Uncle Paul. If He's you want to hold my jacket, you can come by anytime. My friend. <laughs> He's trying to get on the jacket and can't get on, so I don't know what to tell him. Okay. Hey, listen, I want to go back to the Jets D. I have to say the Jets don't have the depth in defense as the Leafs do. From their from their four, five, six D compared to the Jets four, five, six D. There is no comparison. I think the Leafs are way deeper. Not just because I'm a Leaf fan. Come on, think about that. That what's his that Stanley guy? He's a he's a bag of potatoes. He's <laughs> six foot eight or nine. He doesn't even hit anybody. Yeah. He can't move. He's like Gochi, six six. Uh, he's he's <laughs> the a goat. Eight to the side. Fre Freddie the goat. So yeah. so the last question I have about the Leafs Canadians, and we'll move on to the next topic here, gents. Is if they do not, if they don't beat the Jets, they don't beat the Jets and they get knocked out. Is it time? Blow it up. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. Not blow up the team. No, no. But is it time to really look at Shanahan and Dubas? 
because I, I, my, my, my impression of Dubis is he will not win you a Stanley Cup. I think if Lou Lamorello would have stayed, you guys would have had a better chance. The Leafs would have a better chance at winning a Stanley Cup. Um, I think Dubis, Dubis counts on analytics. I think he's going with a goalie that won him in OHL. Uh, I think that um, I think he still has not done enough in, in my estimation to um, solidify the fourth line and get you a number one D. Now, Johnny T, I hope he's doing well. Class act. I love him as a hockey player. But for me, the Leafs should have got Peter Angelo as a defenseman. Spent that money. There was no need to get Johnny T. So your thoughts, guys, starting from Piero down. If the Leafs don't come out of the north, is it time to revisit? Because Babcock took the shit kicking for Dubis and Shanahan's mistakes. Because they're making the trades. They're running the team. He's a dick. No, he I, I, I agree with you about Lou. I, I wanted him to stay because he would have uh, – look what he's done with the Islanders year after year. Um for the what two years he's been yeah. there in a bit, but I think the coaching there has done tremendous job in in the island too. Like Trotz was the yeah. guy. Great. I would have got went to got get Trotz and and fired Babcock a year before he got fired. Okay, yeah. because they weren't responding to him. But yeah, is it time for um, Dubis and Shanny? Shanny for sure. Like this is his plan. Um. And if he goes, Dubas will probably go. But then where? Where where do you lie? Where do you go from if you lose to Winnipeg? Like what can you do? Your hands are basically tied. There's not much you can do with that roster. There's not much you can do with the roster. Other than getting rid of the old guys that you've paid one year contracts to and bring in, I don't know, and then, some and young blood, some more better. That, that's a good point because what do you do? They, you basically have Joe Thornton for this year. His body's taken a beating. He's, you know, he's Jumbo Joe. Wayne, Wayne Simmons is having a decent year, but his body's taken a beating throughout the years. Does he have another good year in him? Um, so, again, the plan with Shanahan, you know, the pain process, even with Babcock saying that as well. And, yeah, you know, Diego said Babcock is a piece of shit. Fine, I get it. He has cups. He has experience. Um, but you look at, it like, a coach like Joe Quinville. OK, um, you know, somebody like that, you're not going to get him because he's done a tremendous job with Florida. Yeah. But but, you know, does experience come into play here once you have these guys like Marner, Nylander and Matthews? And also two guys, just to let you know, is that one thing that the rumor has it. And this is from a good source that I know from the from that was with the Leaf organization is the players like running the asylum. And that's why Babcock was uh, was Gonski. Well, this is why he was gone, right? Because and same with Lou. And same with Lou. Same with Lou. Same he, thing. He lost the room when he when he sat at game one. Okay, uh, a uh, year ago. I get it. I get okay, it. But I think he lost, he lost the room, room before right that. Okay. Right. How do you put Nick Shore? You're not putting another veteran <laughs> in place of Joe uh, Spezza. You're right. putting Nick Shore in game one. You right. lost the room. I'm not defending Babcock, Piero, but what I'm saying is. Do you have this a coach that can get you to the next level? The plan has been how many years, guys? Five or six? Uh, it, how long has Shanahan been here, right? And yeah. they haven't they haven't got out of the first round. They will oh. tomorrow night. They will tomorrow night. Uh, Dubis is about analytics, right? And analytics do not win you playoff games. They don't win you cups. So, um, Lenny, and then we'll go down, and then we'll finish with Piero. Uh, well, I think you could, it might be right, might you know, might be wrong. I mean, we have it's wait and see. Uh, things change, you know. Leagues change. Uh, it's not uh, the 1980s or 1990s anymore. The players, you have to treat them with uh, velvet gloves nowadays. It's not like back in the day when yeah. uh, you you tell them your your shit sit in the corner, what have you. Now these guys are making the money that they're making, and they've been told throughout their whole career that they're number one so you have to you have to be like a psychologist sometimes with these young guys for sure right? yeah you just have to baby them a little bit you have to be, yeah you have to baby yeah. them so um yeah quenville going back to him he was a great coach i would have loved to seen him here but 
you're not going to get the, get him. But another guy, if if it doesn't work out, would be um, what's his name? The guy from uh, from Minnesota last year. Um, uh, oh, what's his name? The big guy. He played for Bruce, the league. Uh, Bruce Boudreau. Boudreau. You know, Boudreau. that guy's got a, a leaf tattooed on his ass. He would love to be there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. he's another. He's another one of those. He's another he one. Chokes of those in the playoffs. Types. He chokes he's another one of those playoffs. Babcock types, Lenny. Uh, not not as much. Not as bad as Babcock. Babcock. Uh, he's got his. Know. And he's got his ego. Yeah, he's, he, he, he's got to beat his ego. He's, he's got to be. He's got to show that he's the, the general. And no, I I mean in terms of the old school mentality, like uh, you know throwing his players under the bus and you know calling players. Wow. Out. Let's let's wait and see what I don't think we should get if they lose to Winnipeg. Okay, go back to the original question. I don't yeah. think we get rid of because you're set, what are you what are you telling the team now? I mean. You so, might have to tweak a few players so, here and there, but so, so how I long mean, is the window, Lenny, for for this? For how long is two the, the two years? Two years. Two years for Sheldon Keith, and you're giving yeah, Dubas and Shannon two more years. Okay. If you don't win, Matthews is going. So yeah. if you don't win, you're losing in three years. You know, coming, coming in this place. Tick tock, David. <laughs> here we go. So, yeah. so Vic, Vic, if the Leafs don't get out of don't get out of the North. Uh, will there be a change in upper management? I don't know if it'll be upper management. I think upper management is going to have to do something to uh, address. Uh, and I don't know if they can, like Piero said, like your hands are tied with those contracts. I would have moved one, of, like or like you said, Nick, like there was no need to go spend $11 million on Tavares. You you, you got to beef up that blue line. It's the same problem Edmonton had. Edmonton had all these number one draft overall picks, and they went and stacked up on forwards and – Look where they're now. They're a two. They're a two-man team that's got no defense and no goaltending. Why? Because of poor drafting, poor organization. So right. you know the Leafs. I think again, if the, if they didn't, they didn't need to sign Tavares. You could have signed, like you said, a guy like Petrangelo. Uh, you start from the back end. Uh, so can they do that next year if they don't pay? If they, if they don't get past Winnipeg, can you go out there and try and get a number one? Who's going to take on those contracts? Right. Right. For sure. No, no. Like Nylander, now you don't want to move him. But there was a lot of talk when the whole uh, scenario happened last year with the, you know the holding out. You know that was a good time to move that contract. Okay, so so looking at different contracts, we got a couple comments here. I think you got a fan in Santiago, Lenny. Again, Lenny knows. So Lenny, Lenny is uh, Lenny's riding the show tonight. We also have Fabio, Fabio, the little Okane chirping in tonight. Uh -huh. He says, Nick, you are right. Dubas made a lot of mistakes and relied too much on analytics. Intangibles win cups. Intangibles can't be measured. So you're talking about a guy that's in a big firm that used to be actually, I think, an intern with MLSC at one point. So thank you, Fab, for your comment. Uh, so, so Okane, Okane, just sitting there. Uh, <laughs> is that a whistle or is that uh, earphones, oh, the, uh, earphones that you got there? Yeah, the bus. <laughs> But, All right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm going to go with Lenny on this one because yeah. two years, um, reaching out back to Piero, what he said, maybe next year, if things don't work out this year, next year, they get rid of some dead weight. The old guys, Thornton, Spezza, right? Even though their salaries, good bang for your buck. Uh, I these wouldn't, guys, that's, I wouldn't he, move. Oh, wow. Uh, We'll see, right? I mean, well, Spezza, hey, Spezza, these Spezza guys said Spezza said this, guys, at the trade deadline. If he was moved, he would retire. And you know yeah. what? The guy, yeah. the guy's playing great hockey. He's one hundred percent. He's, he's going to win like you a game. He'll he's win looking you like series, a star. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. So, um, as for the front office, I don't think you can change. I think these guys will be here for quite a bit. Okay. Right? Um, that so bag, Frank, give me give me a number of years. You're saying two years, Frank? Two to two to three years, I think, uh, is my time frame. Okay, so two to three years for the Okane, Piero. How many years do you give this regime before you say, "I got to hire Lenny and Piero <laughs> to take over the Leafs"? Uh, I, I'll tell you, he'll be here next year, no matter what happens in these. Yeah, yeah, okay. I believe. Um, so. But let's go back to we should have uh, got Petrangelo because. Yeah. If you guys remember, like there's a year apart between the Tavares signing and the Petrangelo getting a free agent, right? Yeah. So Riley, if you remember the year he had just before Tavares got signed, he scored. Yeah, he had a big like, year. 
Yes, sir, goals, 19 goals, something like that. He was in a, yeah. he yeah. was in the, the, the North, North, of, uh, North, North, talking North. North. Yeah. So he, they already thought they had that number one, even though he probably wasn't. Yeah. But you know, we want a belief, right? So that that was the issue then. Tavares came up. They wanted to win that year. Yeah. It didn't happen. Didn't happen. But yeah, did they overpay? Yeah, Tavares is probably a seven, eight million dollar contract. They overpaid for sure. But as years go by, sorry, he's a point of game player still, guys. No, no, he's he's, he's, he's a good player. Okay, if he comes, which is a big if because he got clocked and he's rattled, and now there's knee issues too, and yeah, we don't know, right? How bad that concussion is going to be. But if he just comes back, back. that depth, the depth of the Leaf team Mm -hmm. will be solid. Like. They should get out of the north without him, and if they do, and he comes back for the semis, they're, they'll they'll be deep. They're a deep team, guys. For they sure. are. I, I agree on one thing, fellas. Um, number one is this is the deepest the Leafs have been in years. Uh, they do have some savvy leadership. Um, you know, they they have a goalie that's young, that's riding a high. Uh, they should bury Montreal tomorrow. Again, if you want to become a, a member of the lounge, hit the subscribe button below or follow us on the Hockey Lounge on Instagram. Uh, first off, I want to thank all the viewers. Um, the first episode, we're pumping almost 400 views. And then the second one, we're rocking it almost at 300. So thank you to all the viewers and the followers and the subscribers. Love you out there. So the next topic right now is McDavid versus McKinnon. The boy from Newmarket, Ontario. Or the boy from Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia. You have McDavid here, and I'm just going to read some stats out to you, gents, tonight. You have, he came in the league in 2015, Connor McDavid. Okay? He has missed the playoffs four times since 2015. He has gotten into the playoffs three times and has only won one round. That is Connor McDavid, okay? Highlight reel, every night, offensive flair. You have Nathan McKinnon that came in the league at 2013. He has only missed the playoffs four times. He has lost in the semifinals twice, lost in the first round twice, and now in 2021, he's on to the next round. So from Piero down, if you were a GM today, and you do have, I think that's an orange top, or I think Correct. you were announced the, the uh, coach for Team Canada for the Olympics. Uh, Piero, if you were the GM of, let's say, Seattle, and you had to choose between, actually, let's say you were the GM of the Archibald's Leafs, and you had to choose Connor McDavid or, Na- or Nathan McKinnon, who would you pick today? Piero, your first overall selection. I just want to ask you, is, are we talking with their contracts now or that, that's, a, that's out the window? That's out the window. If you were at the podium today. If you're drafting. If you're drafting yeah. today. If you're at the podium today with a jersey and hat, who would you select number one overall? To me. And, and, and why? And why? To me, it's a no-brainer because coming out of the draft, he was touted to be a superstar. And McKinnon was – touted to be a great, great player, but not a Connor McDavid. So it would, to me, it would still be Connor McDavid. He's got it all. He's got it all. He, he, he just needs a team around him, guys. Come on. They, that that team defensively, and number one thing, their goaltending has always been uh, sparse. So to me, it's the defense and the goaltending on that team. So to me, that doesn't reflect on Connor McDavid. Um, he, he is... Uh, he is the man I would take for sure. Okay, before Leo, uh, Lenny, before you get into your uh, your answer here, uh, it seems like we have another lounge manager, member that wants to come into the lounge tonight for a special appearance. <laughs> we haven't seen him in a little while, okay? He is the one and only. If you have any 80s rock questions tonight, <laughs> Bells is in the house tonight. Steve Bows is here. Hey, hey, hey. 
What's going on, brother? Hey, 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 it's 945. What are you doing up? What's wrong? I, I had to wake up three times to get on this chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we brought Bells on for, for tonight. Uh, he is a good friend of the lounge. Um, but you can ask him any hockey question. He'll just say yeah to it. So um, <laughs> he'll agree to everything you say tonight. But if you do have an 80s question in terms of music or movies or, 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 or bachelor or bachelorette questions, <laughs> Bells will have the answer. He might even go back to the days of Temptation Island. He might have who won Temptation Island. So, Lenny. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, hold on. The only yes. reason I came on here is to talk about the Archibald's Leafs. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There's the trophy. Piero has it. There it is. I was right part there. of that. No? Yeah, he got it. Yeah, for sure. I think. Jeez, I got it done in a paperway somewhere. I, I think record, we had to, I, anyway, going back to your question, Nick. Yeah. I would uh, I agree with my brother. I would uh, take Connor McDavid hands down. No, no doubt about it. I mean, what's happened in Edmonton is not uh, <clears throat> his fault, obviously. I mean, like Vic had said as well, it's a two man show. I mean, they have one line. You shut down that one line, they got nothing else. They got nothing. You know, they got Nurse as well, solid defenseman. Um, Smith played unbelievable this year, but. Can he do it again next year? That's another question, right? Because he's getting up there in age as well. Um, but Edmonton, for some reason, they just can't get it right. I mean, with all those draft picks they've had over the years, first rounders, and they just can't build a team. It's unbelievable. They, they're they're worse. Uh, they're worse off than the le least were back in the eighties. Okay, and the least and my brother and I witnessed a lot of the shit things in the eighties, but they were shit. They weren't getting draft high draft picks like the Edmonton is. I mean, the only high draft pick we got was Clark back yeah. in '85. Yeah, and you um, know, and they could not. And they, I mean, they won a few rounds. It surprised a few people, but Edmonton, for some reason, they just can't can't get it together. And I I feel bad for them because I honestly think that if they don't smarten up within the next two three years, his contract is up, and he's going to say, "I'm out of here." So. That's a good question, and, and before I turn it to Vic, before Vic gets on the podium here to announce his first overall pick, um, I think Frankie's doing blue line, red line with his whistle right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, so when you go, when you look at Nathan McKinnon, you look at Connor McDavid. For me, as a hockey coach, played that position. Um, the big, the big difference I see in the two players is when it comes to Connor McDavid, does he play all three zones? No, does he, he play strong defensively enough no, for his team? No, he doesn't, right? So this is where I think Connor's been in the league since 2015. He needs to grow up as a player and realize that, hey, you know what? The regular season is what it is. You can get your points and you can, you know, have those highlight real goals. But we said this in the beginning of the podcast tonight. To win championships, you need to start from your goalie, your defense. And as a group, as a five-man unit, you need to clean your own zone up, right? So my question is, is Connor McDavid mature enough? He wears the C on his jersey. And leadership is key to winning. By leadership, it's showing on ice examples of playing hard in your own zone. No flybys, stops and starts. No circle buys. So, Vic, are you picking Connor McDavid or are you going with Nathan McKinnon? Uh, it's, you know what? It's a tough call. I would, I would, I would go like, I my my heart would be set on McDavid, because um, again, like Piero uh, Lenny said, and what we all we all know they they're a two man show. He's got nothing around him. Um, McKinnon. McKinnon looks great. He's got a great supporting cast there. Um, but I still think McKinnon is the best player in the game. Get him, get some help around him, get some veterans in there to maybe help with the maturity. Um, and like you said, the difference between the two is um, McKinnon can play an all around game, all three zones. That's that's where my you know where I would it would make it hard for me to decide, but I still think I'd lean McDavid. Well, 
let, let, let's there's a couple there's a couple of comments here so we have lucas mcdavid 100 percent uh santiago again uh chiming in 99 didn't also 66 didn't play all three zones so let me correct you on something here this also has to do with the style of play that your coach is putting out there so if you're playing a one two two if you're playing a two one two passive you have to buy into what your coach is selling and also, too, there are rumors out there that Dave Tippett, the coach of the Edmonton Oilers, have has tried to implement certain systems. Now, yes, I'm a Penguins fan. Yes, it sucks tonight. But I will say this, is that back in 91-92, Mario did realize the only way to win cups is oh, yeah. to play all three zones. Okay? And also, too, the 2016-2017 run, Sydney decided as well. Back in the 80s, you could shoot from center ice and score. So the Oilers were just a high-running offensive team, okay? Frank, your thoughts here on – you're up at the podium. Yep. Okay, but uh, before I answer that, Nick, I got to take one moment. Yep. Uh, I feel bad for Vic because I feel that he's been outnumbered. Okay. Here, a yep. lot of Leaf fans <laughs> on the side here, right? Nice, so – to Don't make worry, you feel, boy, can, hey, to make you feel better, dude. I can handle make, myself. No, no, no. I'm going to support you on this one. Eh? You were my old defensive partner for many years. You bailed me out. I love you, man. So, one second. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 Look at that. Heart, a beauty. All right, if, yeah, you're beauty. a beauty, Vic. All right, hey, so, come up to the come up, Frank. Come up to the screen, Okane. Come up to the screen a little bit, guys. If you want that shirt, just send a comment to the Hockey Lounge. We are printing them; they are hot off the press. Okay. All right, oh, Vic, Vic. I I got your flyer orange. All right, so yeah, you're the best, Frank. Okay, so Nick, uh, putting aside, uh, I I do feel bad for McDavid. Um, I don't know about you guys, what, but when I do watch, you know, the, the, the hockey news or, uh, you know, the scores on TSN, Sportsnet, whatever, ESPN, NHL, it's like when I'm watching like the Edmonton Oilers, I feel like, okay, well, where's that high, highlight real goal from McDavid? And that's what you're going to see. Right when it comes down to the Colorado Avalanche with Nathan McKinnon, when he's on the ice, I feel that there's like Nick, you you, you said it best. Um, it's a five man show, right? Um, the season, yeah, he scores beautiful goals, McDavid. But you know what? I would go and pick with pick um, McKinnon over McDavid if I have a choice. Right, because of that reason. I don't think um, there's a real wrong answer. Yeah, you're right. Not, I, I, I don't think. Yeah. Two different players, you know. Um, listen, in all fairness to Edmonton, if you look at all the games that they lost, it basically by one goal because the game they lost four one. The first one was actually two one, and they scored two empty netters, mm -hmm. right? And then you had three overtime losses. So those could have gone either way. You could have split the uh, three overtimes. They still be playing, but you can't rely, you, you can't rely on Darnell Nurse to play your top minutes either. Well, I mean, who else was going to do it? No, no, yeah. I know. That's but that's my point. Well, they have do. they have nothing else, right? Right. So, they have nothing again, else to rely on. Going back to that, they have to build a a, 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 a team around them. I mean, from the back he, out. He Guys, a, I don't. Who, who plays with McKinnon on the wing? Who plays with McKinnon on the wing? Well, you have uh, a, you have Landis Coggins. Uh, yeah. yeah. uh, okay. Red, yeah. Who plays yeah. who plays on one of the? I know Dry side will go most yeah. of the time, but who plays on the other side? Yeah, you don't know. It, it switches. Cass Cassian Yamamoto. They they talk about Cass, the guy's a goon. Mm -hmm. Who is he? Yeah, he's a goon. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I'm the first. I guess they see it. I, I guess mean, they see it on the get to, to open up space for him. But he's a he's a waste they, of space. They open up space by themselves. They don't need him. No, I know he's a waste of space. Wow. Throwing throwing uh, McDavid the captaincy as well. I think, uh, like Nick said about leadership, 
right? Maybe it would have been a different story if he wasn't captain. Well, maybe right. some sometimes in the league they they automatically give the best player the captain. So we're gonna get yeah. Al's thoughts on. He's at the podium right now. Um, he has Led Zeppelin and ACDC ready to give out the hat <laughs> and uh, the jersey. He's uh, rock and rolling. So Bells, McKinnon, McDavid, McDavid. Oh, well, there you to, go. I want to say something about the Leafs, though. Okay, in go. My opinion. My yeah. opinion. I don't watch hockey like you guys because. Three hours of my life, to whatever. But I've been watching. Your wife won't let you. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching the whole series. The my, dish is Steve. In my opinion, <laughs> I don't think the Leafs. I'm a Leaf fan too, but I don't. I don't. I don't think they have the eye of the tiger. <laughs> you just said That's it yourself. You don't watch a lot. A lot of hockey. So <laughs> <you know. laughs> I don't. They don't. Go back to bed, please. Go back to bed. Turn off. I don't go back to bed. <laughs> go walk the dog and go they back to bed. Survivors on. They don't have a Well, it's three's companies on. <laughs> hey, hey, maybe there's a marathon of Rocky on on uh, A&E. The um, so, uh, Latinos are showing God Godfather again. Go watch that. <laughs> Good fellas. But, right, but, let's, let's, put a twist. let's put a twist in it. I know uh, you only said McKinnon. And McDavid, and that's the question. Okay, but put a twist in it. Matthews, Matthews plays a three-way game now, boys. He go, yeah. he, he digs that puck out, and that yeah. would that would be closer to me mm -hmm. than McKinnon right now. One, pe one because of his age. Well, we're we're looking at draft right then, but goals are hard to come by, and he's right. playing his own end as well. And who last minute he's out there all the time now too, guys. This guy's a hero. Player. He's physical. If, he if you physical. cannot win, if the Leafs do not win with this guy, they will never win. I tell you, one hundred percent right. And that's what I said. They got two two years, three tops. I mean, when his yeah. contract is done, it's, and and he doesn't like what he sees around him, he he's gone. Leave. All right, he's yeah. throwing his way. So you got to take advantage now. And and you going back to the question with Dubis, you could get rid of him if they lose to. Uh, to the Jets, hmm. and then now what? You got to start all over again. I mean, I, yeah. I, I just don't uh, see it. I just yeah, don't. No, you're I, right. I, so. I, 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 if they don't, you, when you make the switch is when uh, Matthews' contract is up, and if he doesn't resign, then you get rid of the clean house for sure, for sure. Okay. So, gents, last. So we're saying we we had McDavid. McDavid was the all right winner um, with building a franchise. Um, last thing before we uh, we finish this show here. So Tampa Bay won tonight. They are off. They yeah. they they won uh, four nothing. So Tampa Bay is off to the next round, uh, either facing the Hurricanes or Nashville. From Piero to to Bell's here. Um, besides the Leafs, what's been the most exciting series here for you guys? And what's been the most intriguing? You know surprises. Um, you know, there's one surprise that Frankie called out on in episode one here on the podcast that they're still surviving. But Piero, what's been your most intriguing series and surprises and disappointments? Uh, the intriguing one is what Frankie said. I think he took the was it? Did he say the Preds? Yeah, did he yeah, say yeah, Predators? yeah, or no? Yeah, he did. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that team is giving fits to Carolina. I, I did not think they would, and. uh are they playing tonight? No. No, they Are they play playing tomorrow, tonight? Believe. No, they're tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah. The Preds, I think, will push a game seven, and they could have easily won last night. Okay. Exactly. Um, yeah. So uh, that's my surprise is is the Preds, and uh, and I think I think I I took Pittsburgh. I really can't believe the Islanders kind of. Scored that many goals on them. That's and the Islanders don't score goals either. Right. Um, so Pittsburgh's my disappointment because uh, the players that they have and the group they had, I thought uh, they would go one more kick at the can because that that group there might be done. Nick, I'm sorry to say, yeah, but uh, yeah, the 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 window the windows, the windows closed closing there. big yeah. time there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, those are my two disappointments, and uh, I think Winnipeg was the surprise you know four straight but then again like lenny said three overtimes could mm -hmm. go either way you know right now you could be looking at uh 
a two, two series easily. Right. So for sure, for sure. but it's been great hockey. The first round's always the best, right? As we know, hundred percent, hundred percent. Lenny. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, my disappointment, uh, would be Pittsburgh losing to the Islanders. That's yeah. that one of them. Um, uh, the one more intriguing is the Predators, Carolina. I really didn't think the Predators were going to be in it as close as they are. Um, the other one that I liked was the Tampa Bay and and Florida series because they really they they really have a hate on for one another. Um, yeah, um, that was a good series. Um, um, and you can't you can't take anything away from Minnesota either. They're they're, they're playing well against uh, the Knights. Uh, everybody. Uh, Thought that Minnesota was dead in the water, but they're 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 playing well, and they, you know I think they play tonight, don't they? Yeah, they're they're tied at zero oh, zero at the end of the second. Zero zero. So zero zero at the end of the second. Yep. And the and the other one that I thought was a big surprise was again Edmonton losing up the way they did. But I mean, again, like I said earlier, it could have gone either way, but they just can't beat that demon that they have. I mean, they talk about Toronto, Edmonton's. In worse shape than Toronto. Okay, come on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But anyways, that's Vic. it, man. Thank you, sir. Vic. Yeah. What do you my, what do you what are your surprises? Uh, yeah. Uh I'd say the Preds hanging in that series too. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Um uh, the I think the most disappointing one for me is uh the way the Capitals uh just showed no life in that series. True. Uh, forgot Boston, about them. Boston handled yeah. them pretty easily, I would say. Yeah. Um, Winnipeg, I wasn't surprised. As you, Nick, know, as you know, I picked them yeah. to win the North as my yeah, sleeper. You, you did. You did. Yeah. Um, I didn't expect them to sweep Edmonton. Yeah. So a little bit of a surprise there. But, yeah, I'd say my big disappointment would be Washington. I thought they'd put up a bigger fight. For sure. And so, and I think, well, the Leafs, if they get through the North, they're playing all their, either Colorado or Vegas, right? Yeah. Depend. No, they're, they're, they'll, they'll be playing the top spot that yeah. comes out of the four. I think it's either one of those two, I believe. Yeah. If there's an upset. Why? Well, well, didn't, didn't, Tampa, didn't Tampa finish below the Leafs? Yes. Tampa was below the Leafs in points. So, I. I well, I, sorry, I, that's I, right. So, Tampa, Tampa, it would be Tampa. And uh, uh, Vegas or Colorado, and right. then the Leafs would be third, I believe. Boston, Boston right? or uh, the Islanders, right? Boston or yeah. Islanders, they'd face. Uh, yeah. the the Islanders. Islanders. But Boston will play Tampa now, right? Yes. So then one of those teams is playing uh, the top seed. So because Boston yeah. finished below uh, the Leafs as well, right? But my most, well, most Bo- Bo- Boston's playing the New York Islanders right now, Piero, next round. Yeah. Oh, the others, but I'm yeah. just saying if they get through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. most intriguing I'd say was I'd agree with Lenny was the uh, Tampa and Florida. Yeah, I think Lenny Lenny just Lenny jumped off here. Oh, he's gone. Lenny, yeah, I think he's Lenny. Old, he has to go to the can. He's out of here. I don't think he like. I don't think he like me picking later. Winnipeg for the North. <laughs> like what I said about the Leafs. Yeah. <laughs> so Frankie, Frank. <laughs> well, uh, you know, yeah. uh, I'm gonna stick with my original pick with the episode one. Uh, you know, uh, I felt that Nashville, I still feel that Nashville will spoil Carolina's party. Um, Sorry, guys. What, no, it's okay. <laughs> what, what, what surprises me is actually the mini and Vegas series. I thought, uh, I'll be honest with you, I thought uh, Vegas would have swept them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I would have thought that Edmonton would have at least got won two games. For sure. Right? Yep. So uh, that's my surprise, I guess, when it comes down to uh, the Vegas and uh, Wild, that the Wild, they're still right. in there and it's tie, right? So yeah. it could be a tie series after tonight. You got it. They're one goal away. Yeah. Pelzi. It's always sad to see the, how the, the McDavid's and the Ovechkin's get kicked out, right? You want to see yeah. them play, right? But 100%. Uh, the game, I watched a few games of the Lightning series. I like that one. Lots of goals. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the Leafs, for sure, they're going to go to the next round. Hopefully, uh, Lenny, hopefully, uh, hopefully they start playing better, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, you just okay. gave it. I just, or what? just want to see the reaction. I just want to see the reaction. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> Forget no, it. I'm not going to even bother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Uh, again, love you having on you guys in the lounge tonight. It's been a pleasure. We've Thanks had a blast. Us, Thank Thanks, you, guys. Good. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Again, if you want to become a lounge member, hit that subscribe button below or follow us on Instagram, the Hockey Lounge. It's been a pleasure tonight with these gentlemen. We, we will see you next Wednesday or Thursday, 9 p.m. If you do want that T-shirt, you know, send a comment. We'll get hey, you. Hey, I get royalties. Eh? I get royalties. Yeah, yeah. Vic gets royalties. Everybody stay safe. Enjoy the playoffs. We will see you next week. And uh, have fun with the Leaf game tomorrow. Good Leaf to Nation. see you, boys. Good to see you guys. Take yeah, care, nice. guys. All have the fun. Best.